remember that the 1960s was just a time of turmoil and chaos. It seemed like America going into the 70s had kind of lost its way and that things were getting a little bit too crazy. And so Richard Nixon is elected in 1968 um, and really uh, not a landslide election, but hit very, very well. Um, the reason that is, is 1968, the Democratic National Convention or the protests and the riots, the Democratic Party was uh, split. And so Nixon defeats Humphrey in the 68 election and promising a more conservative approach to government. Now, he appealed to the silent majority who wanted a more conservative government. Those are not the people that are out there protesting, and speaking out against the Vietnam War, but those are Americans that um, feel like we need to return to more traditional conservative values. And that's what Nixon has to offer. Now, Nixon's promoting a very limited role for government. He tries to eliminate some civil rights legislation, great society programs, giving more control to the states over how money for welfare is spent. He appealed to a group that was listed below that line, the Sun Belt, the 37th parallel. That is what we're, uh, that's what he was focused on at the time. And what we're headed towards is an idea he had, um, he and his advisors created called the Southern Strategy. And so these are the people that he's going to try and appeal to in 1968 and then later in 1972. And so he opposes new civil rights policies and cutting government spending, all things that you would see historically that the South has always stood for. Now, Nixon's more remembered for his foreign policy. These are the good parts of his presidency, though. The key word that you need to remember is detente. We've gone from an era of containment to the domino theory to a new day and age called detente or easing tensions or trying to thaw out the Cold War. And so Nixon and Henry Kissinger worked closely together to structure and cobble together a good foreign policy that would work. And so we call that triangular diplomacy with three major nations, the Soviet Union, China and Vietnam. Not spend a lot of time on Vietnam. You know, his peace with honor plan um, and what he promised to try and get us out of that war. Vietnamization was proposed but unfortunately, the, the war was expanded into Cambodia and Laos, and that leads to the Kent State Massacre later on down the road with protests. But by 1973, um, the ceasefire is signed, and the 17th parallel is created and, uh, or maintained, excuse me, and uh, North and South Vietnam are formed, even though you know two years later that Saigon will fall and be renamed Ho Chi Minh City. Ping pong diplomacy was the second part of triangular diplomacy here. Now, better relationship with China. The U.S. ping pong team did travel over to China to play the Chinese um, in a friendly match, but the bigger picture here is that Nixon was the very first president to recognize and visit China, and the idea behind this was to open up better relations and trading relationships with the Chinese, but this is the real key point about the visit to China, and it was to manipulate the Chinese and play them against the Soviet Union as tensions between those two nations vying for uh, power in the world had kind of become strained as well. So now the USSR has to cooperate with the United States if we now have a major ally in the Chinese. Now, the third part about detente and this triangular diplomacy involves the Soviet Union. And it'll work like this. He's the first president to go over to Moscow and then negotiate with the Soviets and the big thing that you need to take away from his visit to the Soviet Union is the Strategic Arms Limitation Talk, SALT. Now, there was a treaty that was signed at this point in time to limit the uh, production of ICBMs in, uh, throughout the world. So it's the first time that that's ever happened. It's a landmark issue and a landmark moment in Cold War history. So Nixon in 1972 is going to win by a landslide. There is the map right there, but the downside to it is he was a paranoid fellow, kept an enemies list, and, and uh, later on in 1974, he will resign due to the Watergate scandal rather than face impeachment, which leads directly to the Speaker of the House of Rep Representatives, Gerald Ford, to take the place of Richard Nixon. Remember, Spiro Agnew, Nixon's vice president, was uh, a had to resign in disgrace for taking bribes and for tax evasion. Now, Gerald Ford's time as president is real short. 
most people felt like the United States had taken a back had taken a back seat to the rest of the world, or we had taken a few steps backwards as far as our influence throughout the world. But Gerald Ford is seen as a good guy, just kind of an awkward president. Remember for tripping and falling and and those sorts of things. And the first thing that he does as a president is real unpopular. He pardoned Nixon. That seemed to be a mistake because people took offense to that. It wasn't that much longer afterwards from Watergate that he did pardon him. So people felt like he kind of got off easy and that that was maybe a bad political move. But the reason he did it before I move on is so many people had been asking questions about Watergate. Ford said, well, I think I want people to focus on me, not Nixon. That was the purpose of it all. The economy in the 70s had grown stagnant, not a lot of job growth, and inflation was on the rise as well, which leads to your key term during this time period, that is stagflation, which describes all the problems with the economy going on into the 1970s. So also looming in the background is a group called the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. A lot of them are in the Middle East. Now they can control how much is shipped, how much oil is shipped throughout the world, and then specifically how much the prices would be. So in retaliation for the U.S. support for Israel, OPEC embargoed oil on the United States, which causes a lot of gas prices to rise and long lines at the gas stations. Just more frustration during this time period. So um, long story short, Gerald Ford did not have great answers for the stagnant economy of the 1970s. And he will lose the 1976 election to a peanut farmer from Georgia who ran as an outsider. And that man is Jimmy Carter, and he will be the subject of our next review video. Thanks for listening.